Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this video, I'm gonna cover update 13 for Sons of the Forest. Now I have a love-hate relationship with this update. This is a big fixing update, but it changes some things that I'm not a big fan of. There is some minor spoilers and I've moved them to the end of the video, but they're very minor. Just so you know, I'm sick at the moment, so my voice is gonna sound a bit funny. Hopefully it's good enough. Now the first thing, you can now use tarps to build walls and there's a new fold animation. The reason I'm putting this right at the start is they literally started off with the update saying that. This was the highlight. I don't know why, there's so much other better stuff in this update that they could have put in, but this is what they chose. But yeah, you can now place them as walls. I don't know why you do it. I can't think of a reason. They do act like a trampoline, so you can use them to save yourself from fall damage. It's not 100% accurate, but you won't break it. Someone in my Discord named Muffin Man the Third posted this. This is a bug of him getting caught on the trampoline in a sled. He could not get out at all. He was stuck. I don't know if this is a new bug or not. I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you're saving beforehand. The next addition is that there's a new trap called the Uber Trap and it requires a blueprint. The blueprint is located in Cave D, which has received a major revamp and a lot's changed there, but I'm gonna save it for the end of the video as it does contain the spoiler stuff. But I'm just gonna cover the trap and where you can get it in Cave D later on. This trap's quite comical because it stuns them, then it burns them, and then the trap closes on them. You think this sounds really epic? Well, unfortunately it's not because it only does just over 100 damage. So it will kill most cannibals, but anything else it's not gonna kill and it can only target one thing, and it is very expensive to build. It's comical, it's funny that it hits them three times with three different things, electricity, then fire, then physical, but it really is an act viable. To kill an armsy with it, you will need to hit it five times with it. It is free to reset from what I can tell, even though it has booze in it. If you had to pay for the booze, this would not be worth making. What I do like about it is that they're making use of the bones in the game. The next addition to the game is specialty furniture items, I'm gonna call it, or a gore couch and a gore chair. And they're blueprints and they can be found in the fishing huts, one at each one. You'll see in the video here on the GPS where it is. I can't show them to you because YouTube's got strict rules for that sort of stuff. They're quite comical. The chair's even powered by lights. The couch isn't. That's end night's sense of humor right there. Just so you know though with this is that the update didn't allow me to get these items. They weren't spawning in. I tried verifying the game's files, they still didn't spawn and I had to completely wipe the folder out and reinstall the game from scratch to make these things spawn. So if you're having the same issue as me, just completely uninstall the game and reinstall it. And Knight did say to me that sometimes Steam can mess the files up. Not sure if it's Steam's fault or if it's Knight's fault or does it really matter? Yeah. The next addition is that they've added a new skin face mask enemy type named Henry. Now these guys are very aggressive. They don't give you much breathing room. Fighting them in melee was a freaking nightmare because I just had no stamina. Blocking attacks, he's just constantly attacking. And when you block an attack in this game, you use stamina. Fighting with melee, I had no stamina to fight him. And he took off so much armor. I wasn't expecting the level of aggressiveness that he presented. However, if you just go ranged, he's a cakewalk. I spawned in three of them. Using the crossbow, I only took one bolt to kill every one of them. They can wear armor though. He had the armor with a bolt or an ammunition of some kind. It'll just knock that piece off. He's also got 160 health, which is 60 more than normal cannibals. The fat ones and the huge dudes have more. I'm just not sure how much it is. But these guys aren't easy to take down. Unless you go ranged, like just about everything in this game. They make cannibals too proficient at dealing with melee and barely anything with ranged. The next addition is that they've added a new buildable, which is a round table. It's relatively cheap to build. When I first saw it, I thought this would be awesome if you could place items on it. So I tried to glitch a shelf underneath it and place items that way. And it looked a little bit too difficult. Plus it would only be on the edge. I'm gonna experiment more with this, but as it stands, I don't know what you're gonna put on it. It's cool though. The next change is the first of the unpopular changes that I was talking about earlier. Regular puffies can no longer be skinned for creepy armor and John 2 increased to give two creepy armor. This is going to make cave navigation quite a lot different and it doesn't incentivize the player to kill these things too much. These guys are too easy to kill, but honestly, armor's just not worth it that much. 
I don't think so anyway. I mean, it's helpful, but it's not that useful. If you get into a melee fight that goes bad with any enemy, you will lose six or eight pieces. It just falls off you. One hit on hard survival, I don't know about the other difficulties, one hit takes off two or three pieces. I don't think this was a necessary change. Maybe lessen the effect of mutant armor? Make it weaker? I'm not sure. But the blue ones still give two pieces of creepy armor. I tested those ones out. Those things hit like a truck though. If they do a spin attack, you'll lose like six pieces of armor in one hit. So good thing they give two, eh? The next one is a very good one. They fixed John 2 phasing through walls and not triggering the mace and radio trap. The mace trap is actually the hokey pokey trap. I think they call it a mace because it kind of looks like one. Or they could have called it a flail trap. Either way, yes, he doesn't glitch through walls. I tested the same castle that I had issues with recently on an episode. Don't want to talk about it. They took the long way around. I had a ramp on the side and they actually went straight for it. I don't know what they would have done if the ramp wasn't there, whether they would have just attacked the walls. I'm not sure. I didn't think of that at the testing time. This has been a major problem of the game since it's been released. It's taken them like six months, but at least they've done it now. It's a good change. This one needed to happen. John 2 was an absolute mess of an enemy. I would say it was probably worse than the worm from the forest. Now, I got a comment in the video that I did where I fought the scene. He got stuck underneath my base. I can't remember their name, so I apologize for this if you're watching this video. But they mentioned that if you drive a golf cart into the John 2, you'll kill him. Easy. I didn't really believe it, but it actually just one-shots them. I'd imagine they're probably going to fix this soon because this seems overpowered as hell. But then again, most of the time these things show up, they're already at your wall. It's not like you have time to run down to your golf cart and jump in and run out. Or maybe you will. But if the traps are working on them now, probably going to make it a lot better. This is probably one of the best changes for the update. Now, I don't know how to get footage of this, but they switched a lot of item colliders to primitives to improve performance and reduce the risk of falling through terrain. This is a major one if you like eating Greg recipes, because when you're getting the pieces for that recipe, there's one piece that will almost always fall underneath the terrain and disappear, and you need a whole body basically for it. Hopefully this is a proper fix, because this is actually quite infuriating, especially on hard survival. The next change is that the item plating structure can now be destroyed if it is attacked. This is just stock standard stuff. It was only released last update and it wasn't destructible. I thought it was done on purpose because when you use this thing, it does activate a wave of mutants to attack you. And if you're standing next to it as they're swinging at you, they'll hit that thing and they'll probably break it. If it does get broken, you lose a percentage of the items. So you'll lose at least a turtle shell and a battery. I don't think there's any structures in this game that are actually non-destructible. You can still go into the options menu and turn off building destruction if you want. If you're concerned about this getting broken, just find an island and do it on that because they won't be able to cross over. Though they've also reworked the item plating structure so that you don't need to use a grab bag to add the solophite. This is really good. This was annoying to do. So you don't need to do the grab bag thing at all with it. Just a note on this structure in the patch notes or the update notes, they really like calling it the item plating structure. They're not calling it a forge, which is suggesting to me that they're actually going to add a forge to the game. But this is purely speculation because I'm just wondering why not just call it a forge? Well, probably because they're going to add a forge. Well, though, we'll have to wait and see. I could be wrong. The next change is for the blueprint or survival guide. It's received an overhaul. It's had a lot of changes added to it. And to be honest, it isn't that great. There's a lot of tabs on it now, like the forest. But honestly, they should just make the book a lot bigger. It's just too much to fit on one little book. Just bring back the double-sided, two blueprints on each page. Just make it so it's bigger. I do believe Tony Macaroni mentioned that he's going to add a search function to this book, so a lot of this could be avoided. I like their attempt, but I don't think its execution's done well. It's very fiddly in that. Just make it bigger. Who's it going to hurt? The next change is actually one that I don't like, but they removed three console commands. They removed the cave light one, the AI pause one, and the AI ghost one. Main reason I've got an issue with this is that these were quite handy for making videos especially cave light because you can see a lot better in caves you could actually make a video because blacks in video don't carry over well once they've been encoded you get this mad pixelation crap happening though modders will be able to fix this just disappointing they moved the pjs to the sailboat pajamas that's the outfit you can wear and they've removed it from the luxury bunker you can also find this in the entertainment bunker now i know this sounds like a silly item but it is not if you wear the pajamas before you sleep it's almost guaranteed you're going to get a full rest and you'll wake up with 100 percent energy because a lot of the time especially in hard survival you won't wake up with 100 percent energy and to fix that you'll have to sit on a bench for like a minute waiting for it to rejuvenate so this item is actually quite useful i actually often put it on and forget that i'm wearing it but yeah it's on the sailboat and as mentioned it has been completely removed from the luxury bunker you can't find it there 
The next change is that twins can now break through and emerge from the ground in both caves and overworld. This is a good change, kind of looks cool. You see four hands coming out of the ground. I don't know if you can attack it while it's in this animation. I don't know what it's doing underground as well. Maybe it just wants some privacy as it's technically a hermaphrodite. But yeah, the next change is that they've added left-handed item support while using the log sled. What this means is that you'll be able to use a lighter or the GPS in your left hand while pushing it. This is just like the forest. It was in the forest and they brought it into this one as well. What's cool about it is when you're using the GPS while pushing the car, your hand isn't waving from side to side. Because for some reason, when the player's only holding the GPS in their hand and their right hand is free, they shake the freaking thing from side to side. I don't know why. You literally have to have an item in your right hand to be able to see the GPS when you're moving because it shakes from side to side so bad. The next two are for Kelvin. They fix Kelvin not being able to cut down Arbertus trees, which could stop his progress in getting logs. You ever catch him just standing there doing nothing? Yeah, I catch him a lot. But if you're wondering what trees they were, they were these ones. I've never seen these trees in my life. They're a tree. Wow. The other change for Kelvin is that he can now retrieve nearby spears. I don't really know what use this actually has unless they plan on adding defensive structures that use spears. I could imagine this would be quite useful. There's no place to store spears or weapons in the game at this time. So I don't know what you're going to do with the spears. The next one is quite disappointing because I found it doesn't work for me. Even after verifying the game files, maybe my GPU needs to update, I don't know. But they've added an FPS limiter to the pause menu to fix GPUs being overworked. Basically what was happening before for some reason was that when you pressed escape to pause, the GPU would start running at near 100%. Well mine did as it's a 3080, it's a decent GPU. Having it run at 100% is not pretty because it gets really hot and loud. I accidentally left the game running, I came back into the room and the room was 35 degrees. That's how bad it is. As you can see in this footage, this isn't from the last update video which I did the same thing. This is the new one and it is just pulling so much power. I don't know what's going on with this. Maybe I'm the only one. I'm sad though. Mwah. Next one is that they have apparently fixed zipline early disconnects. I don't know if this includes this bug that where you just stop and fall off just before you're about to get to the end. As you can imagine with a zipline tower, you take a lot of damage. The next change is that they've added a crafting sting to crafting zipline rope. Before it made no sound whatsoever. This is the sound it makes now. As you can tell, that is probably the most epic sound out of all the crafting stings. I hope they do some more because this is kind of cool. The next change is that they've disabled torch block since it didn't block any damage. Now this is referring to the fire stick, not the flashlight. I didn't realize you could block with it. In the forest, I actually used to use this a lot in caves and even block with it. And it was actually really good because you didn't have to put it away constantly. If you didn't want to deal with enemies, you could just block and get to an area where you were safe in the cave where you could fight. A well lit area, for example, but you can't do that. There's going to be annoying getting this in and out. Once you light it the first time it appears, it stays lit. So you just pull it out, it'll be instantly lit. I think they've done the torch dirty on this one. I think it should have block. Nothing major, but at least a decent amount. It's a thick stick. Of course it's gonna block some damage. Also, when you swing to take down the new barricades in Cave D, my lord, it swings side to side and they're kind of vertical, so you can't destroy it or you'd be there forever. I think N9 needs to give the torch more love because you can use it at the same time using the flashlight. Very good. Especially after they've removed the cave light console command. Just saying. The next change is that the player is no longer blasted into space if they open their inventory while standing on the arm spring trap. Obviously, I'm not able to capture this footage, but I'm guessing it happens something like this. In the console commands, you can change gravity. I don't recommend you touch this command because changing it back to the original gravity amount can be quite difficult. The next change is that the player can now jump while riding the Knight V and holding a structure. Now, I didn't even know you could do this. You can ride a Knight V and hold a structure at the same time which could be good for moving bases. Though a lot of structures that can be picked up aren't really worth moving, to be honest, because they can't be full of items. But it's still cool to know. The next one's just an interesting observation. The fishing huts have had a lot of updates, obviously, but they've actually got solophite in some of the buildings, which means they most likely respawn, which means that you can get solophite without going to mine it. Kind of neat, I guess. However, solophite's pretty easy to get. And if you're going to use solophite, you're going to need the forge or item plating schematic, which is in the same cave that the mining pick is in. And there's no enemies down there. So it's not that big of a deal, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Next one is that items in the inventory will now wobble for a moment when the inventory is opened. This is probably just a cosmetic thing, but it actually makes it look a lot better when the items textures are loading in. If they're wobbling around, it's not so noticeable, but when they're still, very noticeable when the textures haven't rendered in properly or yet. So yeah, it didn't seem to lag the game at all. 
Now, before I go into spoilish territory, what I'm going to do is cover the rest of the patch notes and mention a few I wasn't able to get footage for or just couldn't or the usual excuses I give. The first one is that they've changed the character name on the Sundowner magazine. I don't know what that reference is. I wasn't able to find it, but I don't believe the character that you play as has a name. It might be on there now. The next one is that trying to ride the zipline with a Mounted Knight V is no longer possible. So they've removed that. They've added a delay to activate stump damage one second to prevent stumps being instantly destroyed. So I think it's when you're cutting down a tree, you can accidentally destroy the stump. Honestly, this change is actually negative for me because I don't have tree regrowing. I always remove the stump. I think those people's needs are more important because once you destroy a stump, it's gone forever. So I can imagine a few of them would be pissed if they did that. The next one is that left hand items can no longer be re-equipped while the left item was stashed to reload the right hand item. I just thought it was funny how that was worded. I, don't, I think it is quite relevant for change. I'm sick and I'm just saying things. They fixed an issue where pickups with ranged amount ammo boxes would never include their max value in their random value calculation. For example, a chance of 1 to 2 would always result in 1. This is actually a huge change for those who are playing with items that respawn, the cases and such. It's going to pretty much double the amount of ammo you're going to find, which is kind of cool. Next one is that they fix Puffy sometimes not waking up after being hit. This is something I've noticed. I think this is a good change. Cannibals will no longer place effigies overnight in peaceful mode. Well, that's good because they weren't even supposed to be there in the first place. They fix the flashlight not matching the aim of the revolver or pistol when aiming down sights and not matching the rope gun aim. Yeah, that's a, that's a useful one. I just spaced out then. Some improvements to cave A detailing and some details and tweaks to cave B as well. I don't know what they were, but I'm sure they were pretty good. They've also added a bunch of new gore and hanging gore props. Tony Macaroni's gonna love that with his sensor mod. This was actually one of the major points, but I just can't show it in my videos because of the way YouTube is. But that's your spoiler warning onto what could be potentially a spoiler, though very minor. They've added some new pickup notes to the game. I think there's like five, but one of them wasn't working. I'm not sure. But two of them are found in the fishing huts. One is found in the entertainment bunker and it references the fishing huts. And the other one is found in bunker residential. So they're really fleshing out the story for these fishing huts. The next one is that they've added an extension to cave B and it's actually quite sneaky where they put it. It's right on the edge and there's a few boxes of items and stuff. There's no enemies down here. It's a little bit of trouble. I don't think you need the rebreather, but there's one of the new three question mark items is basically a part of the artifact. It's safe down here, just don't fall or drown. They added two of these. Next one is in Cave D, which I'm gonna cover now. Now, Cave D is that huge, massive cave that most people will actually dislike. It's not that bad once I figured it out, but they've changed it a lot now. So here's what they've done right, and here's what they've done wrong. So the cave has gotten quite a bit bigger, and a lot of it's changed. However, they've made a lot of effort to give signature things to each area, so it's not as easy to get lost. And I'll cover that as I'm going along. Now, coming through this entrance way, I can't really remember what's what, but they've changed the location of the rifle. It's now hanging from a mercenary or a soldier hanging from the roof. It's in his hand. It's not much of a change. He still had to hug the right of the wall and continue along. It's probably easy to find as the cave kind of guides you to it. I don't think you're going to miss it. But most of the cave is still the same in its shape. So you shouldn't struggle to navigate it if you followed my map video I made on it. I think it's still kind of relevant. Probably needs to be redone though. Though the end part where the golden armor has changed significantly. Before it was just a room with a skeleton wearing the armor and there was five demons. Now it's actually a spaceship. And in the room there's three ropes. And in the back, there's this wooden part covering up the back of the spaceship. It's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> Imagine flying the space like that. Obviously, there's a lot of crosses in here because they were intending to keep the demons out. Inside, there's a lot of detail on the spaceship. I'm very curious if End Knight actually just bought the assets for this or did they create it themselves? But yeah, there's a lot of detail in this. And there's a skeleton on the chair shaking with the golden armor on. When you take the golden armor off, it settles down and then the skeleton explodes. Not violently, but it's no longer a rope to climb out. You've got to climb up a ramp. The interesting thing about the solophyte stuff is that it's constantly zapping the spacecraft, which to me, it indicates that this is a solid form of power, which is making me wonder why we're having batteries and golf cart batteries and that. I think they could have worked with this tech that they've introduced into the storyline. We'll have to wait and see. As you progress through the cave, there's a lot more demons and a lot less mutants. Eventually you'll come to this ramp thing and if you go underneath it, behind it at the back, you will find the blueprint. It's hidden behind a barricade. That's the blueprint for the uber trap. But if you go up, 
and above it there's the other three question mark item the part of the artifact and if you continue along eventually you'll come out in the cave spot where the skeleton is but he's no longer wearing the night vision goggles it's actually in another section of this cave hanging from a dude once you find the red light lamp on the ground you just continue on and you'll find him hanging from the roof this is what i meant it's good what they've done they've added some things that indicate areas i think they should use more different colors of led lights to indicate to players of where they are in caves because it's so easy to get lost but yeah there used to be two night vision goals now there's only one i believe but that's it i am losing my voice as i'm speaking right now so i've got to end the video overall it's a pretty decent update a lot of fixes as you've probably seen a lot of questionable changes I bitch and moan enough. But yeah, let me know what you think of the update in the comments. It does have a lot of good stuff in it though. The next update from this one is going to be three weeks away. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.